Hey all you REO guys that made tons of money selling bank owned homes, you know who you are, and hey all you other guys and gals that wish that you could have got a piece of the action, I got a secret. It's not over. Now before you roll your eyes and go, I know what he's gonna say, shadow inventory is gonna be released like the Kraken and we're gonna be flooded with real estate. No, I'm not gonna say that, but one does have to wonder about this supposed shadow inventory. I mean, really, does it exist or is it just like a myth like the lender that always closes on time? Nevertheless, that's not my point. My point is this, the REO gig isn't over. Current REO guys, sharpen your pencils or really just dust off all those contacts that you had with all those asset managers because they're about to be useful shortly. Why? Well, little known report from a group known as SIGTARP. Yep, good old SIGTARP. Why does the government always have to give an acronym to every government agency? I mean, really, there has to be a guy somewhere in Washington and his only job is to sit there and name newly formed agencies. Um, SIGTARP. Oh, um, uh, hush puppy. Ah, better than this. Um, SUCTARP. No, oh, ah, uh, SIGTARP. Got it, SIGTARP. Well, SIGTARP stands for Special Inspector General for the Troubled Asset Relief Program. Hey, acronym guy, that's really SIGTARP. Missed a couple letters there. Anyways, SIGTARP was created back in Congress in 2008 to get, well, get this, and I didn't make this up. We are a sophisticated white collar law enforcement agency established by Congress in 2008 to prevent fraud, waste, and abuse linked to the $700 billion Troubled Asset Relief Program. Wow. Sophisticated and white collar. Okay then, these guys are a watchdog of sorts to ensure that the $700 billion is well spent on the recovery. After all, the cruelest joke of them all is that the TARP money, you know, the $700 billion that was designed to bail us all out in the worst of times, well, that's in fact our money. It's our tax dollars. Irony, she's a bitch. So back to SIGTARP. They released a report last week that should have us all sitting up like prairie dogs. Alan, Alan, out. Alan. Buried in this report is a section that you'll find and they're talking about how less than 2% of the TARP funds were actually spent on actual homeowner relief. Okay, well, let's not panic. Surely the TARP pimp or the money hander outer was just being really smart about handing the money out, right? I mean, he's probably just making sure that they're handing the money to the guys that really needed it versus the people that were like super buried. I mean, that has to be it, right? Let's just see, let's just keep reading here. As of March 31st, the treasury has spent less than 2% 7.3 billion dollars of the TARP funds on homeowner relief programs including HAMP and the hardest hit funds while spending 75% to rescue financial institutions. Son of a... The goal was to help homeowners. Okay, let's not jump to conclusions. Let's just keep reading. TARP has helped many homeowners with permanent loan modifications. See, they spent less than 2% of the money, but it went to really good use. See? No worries. I mean, I wonder how many people it helped. Okay, 862,000 families, not a huge number, still not bad, almost a million. See, that would have been a million more foreclosures right there. Now they're solid homeowners. Let's just read on for giggles though. SIGTARP finds that many homeowners are defaulting on their modifications. Frick, more than 312,000 to date. Double frick. SIGTARP is concerned that these default rates are increasing at an alarming rate, a default rate of 46.1%. So all that money, I mean, what am I saying, all that money? The little funds that actually went to prop up housing were just a band-aid at best, and now, just now, we're gonna see these homes hit the market? Right. I think the bottom line is this. Loan modifications that helped lower the payment but did not address the underwater issue are the equivalent of like a poorly built dam. It will appease the homeowner for a bit until one day he wakes up and realizes, I don't care if I pay a thousand or two thousand bucks a month, I'm not gonna pay into this severely upside down home. We said this two years ago on this very platform. It's not a payment issue, it's an equity issue or a lack thereof. Now I'll go on to say something fairly bold just like we did two years ago. This won't only be a loan modification redefault problem. All these HARP 2.0 loans that the lenders are writing right now, I'll bet we'll see a ton of those redefault as well. Again, we lower their payment, but we never address the equity issue. And nobody likes throwing good money at bad. And in the end, like I said at the beginning, this will all lead to more REO and short sale business. HAMP and HARP redefaulters who fought the good fight will finally concede and either short sell or hand their homes back to the bank. You can't argue with a redefault rate of 46%. It's gonna happen. So you know what's funny? One has to wonder if this wasn't the plan all along. I mean, it goes with the rest of Washington's strategies to soften the economic blow. Maybe it was the plan all along. Maybe they knew they couldn't stop it and so they worked to slow it down and spread it out over several years. Makes you think. Speaking of things, what do you guys think? Share down below. After all, we're the guys and the gals in the trenches and nobody knows better than us. I'll see you guys next week.
knows that's not Alan. Steve, that Steve. Steve, 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 Steve. Oh no, that's not Steve. That is Alan. Alan, Alan, Al, Alan, Alan, Alan.